Season 1 is here, and with it comes a lot of content from new functional weapons to maps to game modes and more. And in this one, we're breaking down everything that is new and what you should be aware of. As we go along, drop your thoughts below. What are you liking so far out of Season 1, and what do you think is the best change we've seen so far? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video and found it out on Insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. We've got a lot to discuss here upcoming, so make sure you stick it here on the channel. We're chasing down 600,000 subscribers, so if you'd like to join the community and you're a part of that 70% of viewers who are not subscribed, I'd love to have you. But for now, let's take a look at everything that Season 1's update changed. Firstly, let's start out with this new content. We, of course, have a brand new system of a battle pass, which will introduce a bunch of things like new weapons, which we'll talk about in a second. But as for how this new battle pass works, it's a new map and sort of sector system here, where functionally your weapons seem to be entirely the same, taking about 15 to 31 tokens respectively. But instead of earning them in a linear fashion, you instead have a little bit more freedom per se to unlock things when you want, where the path to unlocking those is a bit more up to player choice rather than simply, say, getting to tier 60. Now, the earlier tiered items, that's kind of inconsequential in regards to how it's changed to fit the new system, but the higher tier items, those things that later on in the battle pass, you can take a more direct route to those, or you can end up doing it at sort of the same pace that you'd see with the prior battle pass system. But as for unlocking stuff, you start out at A0 and A1, depending on where you are in that battle pass. A0 just kind of gives you that base entry but with each individual sector you have four different items and then a fifth high value target that you can end up unlocking to end up unlocking that high value target fifth tier to complete the sector of the battle pass you have to unlock the subsidiary four different items within that and then it'll take a fifth token to end up getting that high value target and capping off that sector once you complete a sector you can then move on to either of the two connecting sectors that is touching that currently completed one so it's kind of a progressive system but again with a bit more choice you can go one way or the other Currently, the new weapons of the Bass P and the Victus XMR are an A6 and A7. So again, still taking you roughly 15 to 30 or 31 tokens to obtain both of those. Now, the UI is a little bit confusing, but in the bottom right, you'll see that sort of battle pass icon with a number next to it. That's how many tokens you have available. So for those of you that got the Vault Edition, it should grant you immediate access, plus also 50 to 55 tier tokens. So you can jump in and start unlocking things immediately. Beyond that, of course, we end up having three brand new weapons here to play around with. The Bass P and the Victus XMR, both available from the Battle Pass, and then the M13B. We'll have a guide here on the channel in a couple of hours here on how to do this very easily, very efficiently. It's kind of a pain, but at the same time, you can make it a little bit easier for yourself. So for that, we're going to dive deeper into that and honestly tell you how you can get it in less than five minutes. There's a handful of different ways you can approach it. The M13B is the only one that I got to play around with so far, but I love it. It's definitely something you're going to want to unlock. So it is going to force you to play a little bit of DMZ if it's not necessarily your cup of tea. But again, you can do it pretty quickly and then jump in and start leveling up the M13B. From there, we also ended up seeing Shoot House introduced as a brand new map here or returning map. It's the Las Almas version here of this where it is set in a more so green and mountain setting as opposed to the desert with what we saw in Modern Warfare 2019. Honestly, really like the aesthetic here of this plays pretty well. Right now, I've heard that there's a bunch of different wall breaches and invincible spots. So just bear that in mind that it seems to be bugged right now at the very launch, but fingers crossed that gets ironed out soon. We saw some new prestigious here introduced where the progression is going up to prestige 5 level 250. We have brand new spec ops content, a brand new mission coming along here at this, and also something for those of you guys that are camo grinders. Not only is Shoot House a great option to do this, but also tier 1 is a great option as well. This being the hardcore mode that was finally introduced within the season of Modern Warfare 2. So jump in. It should have available on offer all the game modes that you normally have available to play. You can just play that again in that tier one hardcore format. Then we finally have a way to sort of look at our barracks to some degree where we have calling cards and emblems available. We have new mastery challenges set up, which there's some cool calling cards that I definitely think I'll be going for, which a lot of them are really mastery challenges. So they're going to be quite in depth, a lot of reason to grind if you are somebody that likes calling cards, but that's something you can check out. We have a brand new combat record now, which will show you your basic stats here that was introduced as well. And then finally on the Modern Warfare 2 specific side of things, we have weapon tuning which this might drone on, so I apologize. We're talking about specific details of weapons. If you guys want to skip it, we should have the chapter available on the progress bar of this video that you can skip ahead or go to certain points. But anyways, let's talk about the weapon balancing the first major tuning pass we have here for this. For assault rifles overall, it increased the long distance flinch on all assault rifles. The cast off 545 had an ADS speed increase while also improving the ADS iron sight sight picture. The 74U had an ADS speed decrease as well as hip spread increase, so a nerf there. The M4 had a hip spread reduction, which 
makes that a little bit tighter on that hip fire the m16 had probably the most amount of work done to it where the rate of fire was increased the hip spread was reduced a buff there the recoil recenter speed was increased the shot grouping was improved so you no longer have as wide of bullet spray on each burst it increased the ads move speed it increased the strafe move speed and it reduced the recoil in semi-auto mode but also reduced the damage in semi-auto mode as well so a slight nerf to that damage property but everything else was relatively a buff the scb had a close range damage reduction as well as a sprint to fire speed reduction so slight nerf there the battle rifles of the ftac recon had an ads speed improvement a five round magazine speed and handling improvement an increase to the flinch caused by bullets and its hip fire was decreased the so 14 had an increased hip fire when full auto so a slight nerf there all handguns had an increase to the close range flinch all lmgs had an increase to the long distance flinch and for specific marksman rifles we saw damage range reduction to the lockwood 300 minor increase to the flinch when hit on the sab 50 the spr 28 had a large increase to the flinch when hit so that should knock you off target a little bit further all shotguns had an increase to the close range flinch the bryson 800 in addition to that had a close range damage increase and hip spread increase so making that a buff and a nerf all submachine guns had their increase to the long distance flinch while the fss hurricane had an additional ads move speed increase increased headshot damage and an increase to the far damage range the mini bach had a movement speed decrease damage range decrease ads speed decrease and hip spread increase so nerfs overall to the mini bach the pds or the P90 had a movement speed increase, damage range increase, ADS speed increase, hip spread decrease, and had laser and flashlight attachments added. The Vel 46, finally rounding out our SMGs, had a damage range increase as well. And finally, for weapon tuning, we saw the Signal 50 fix the attributes on the barrels of the 21.5 inch and the 23.5 inch barrels as well. Beyond that, we saw some weapon bug fixes. There's a drop shot exploit fix. There's a bipod mount launching fix, which was just kind of your trick shotting stuff you'd see and a few other things. But beyond that, that's your Modern Warfare 2 update. Notably missing out of the introductions here for Modern Warfare 2 was the CDL mosh pit. This has been delayed I don't want to say indefinitely because that sounds like it's going to be something that comes way later on down the line, but they said that there was recently discovered issues that wouldn't allow them to push the update with this out as of today. So a slight delay on that. Hopefully it comes soon. But beyond that, we then, of course, have Warzone 2 being introduced here with Battle Royale and DMZ coming across the board. So a bunch of stuff here on offer. Battle Royale offering up brand new ways to play, a brand new map of Al Mazra, the player count of 152 upwards of that, the new loadout system where right now it seems like you can't edit your perk packages so there's a handful of different pre-made ones that they detailed in which is certainly interesting i'm not sure how that's going to play out if we're going to be able to customize these at all but for the time being we have a handful of different pre-made ones so just bear that in mind that if you go in you get your loadout it's not something you're going to have full control over what those perk packages are but you can set them up with those defaulted perk packages in your warzone experience before you boot up now dmz is the other big part here with this where this launched currently in trios it's not necessarily known if we're going to see solos duos or quads coming as well but there are 66 total players you can see around the world but of course we have a ton of different ai inhabiting a bunch of different areas on that strongholds and everywhere in between but this is something that you can drop in loot up extract and honestly having watched it at the reveal event last week versus playing it i'm actually liking this a lot more than my initial feelings on it by watching it it's a lot more intuitive of course right now there has been a goal where you want to go in and end up getting the new weapon of the m13b out of it so there is sort of an end game to it i'm sure that this novelty of it will wear off after a couple of days once I've done everything that I can but for the time being honestly quite liking it. it's a little bit more relaxed though you still of course will come into contact with players who absolutely can be sweating it up but that's something to consider that you have that way to play the game as well and finally the last thing we'll talk about that was introduced with this season one update is of course a store now, I don't want to spend too much time here on this but you will see new things like featured bundles blueprints and operator bundles which are available for certain denominations of cod points there are a cool couple different blueprints that I've seen in the shop already, but it is something that's entirely up to you just kind of putting that out there that it was added in. But for now, that is the update and everything that season one has in store for us. We'll of course be breaking down a lot more of the coming days here in a lot more depth, but for right now, that's where we're at here. That's what was added as of this update. So jump in and check it out. But wrapping up, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys liking anything in particular here out of this season one update? Anything that really stands out to you? What are the case? Drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2. We've got a lot upcoming, so make sure you're here on the channel. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.